Hi everybody, welcome back. Hope you enjoyed your Easter vacation, if you had one. If not, happy Easter anyways. Tomorrow is Easter. We took a little bit of time off this week. Hope you weren't too disappointed in that. We didn't give you a heads up on that, but there was not a lot of activity around here. So today we are going to be making a turkey pot pie. I cooked extra turkey during Thanksgiving and Christmas holidays and froze the remainder of it. So I took some out and I chopped it up and it's all ready to go. Um, this is probably about three cups worth. You can do as much as you want or as little depending on how much meat or protein that you prefer in your pot pie. What I did here is I took a small organic onion and I chopped it up and I also took three sticks of celery and I chopped those up and then I have a little bit of Kerrygold butter here and what we're going to do is we're going to heat this on low until the onions become translucent and then we'll be right back. I chopped up into small pieces some carrots and we're going to go ahead and boil these so that they're pre-cooked because all of our ingredients are mostly cooked. Carrots take the longest. So this we're just going to heat up until it's translucent as I said. And at the same time we're going to be cooking our carrots so they get soft but not too soft because we want to keep the nutrients in them. So we're going to heat this up at the same time that our carrots are cooking. Okay, our carrots have been cooking for about six minutes. They're still a little bit crunchy, which is perfect. And we still have this in here, kind of softening up our celery a little bit and getting the onion cooked up so it's a little softer as well. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna dump the water out from this. So that's strain. We're gonna dump this in here. And stir this up a little bit, combine that. You can add salt and pepper, any kind of spices you like. I'm usually conservative on that. My salt usually comes from my butter and I don't add extra unless I'm using unsalted butter, which I never do. And this is just a little bit of pepper. So we got that going in there. We are gonna also add a bag of peas, but not yet because peas tend to cook pretty quickly. I'm just using a frozen pea. So we're gonna put that on like that. Now I have this on a really low heat because I'm about to add some milk and I don't want it to curdle. So make sure that your pan isn't overly hot. I'm gonna add some milk. You can also add some broth to this if you want. That's probably a little more than a cup of milk, maybe a cup and a half of milk. And then I'm gonna add some sprinkles of flour because that's gonna thicken things up for us here. You could also just buy a cream of celery or cream of chicken soup and mix that in. I don't really like that kind of stuff very much, so I just make my own. Flour helps thicken this up, sprinkle it on. Then I'm also gonna add a little bit of half and half to this. It's a little bit creamier. It's back on there. So we have a little bit of organic half and half here. I'm just gonna pour mm, a little more than half a cup in there. And then we had all purpose flour that we used. Stir this up. Have it on low and it'll thicken this up. What I'm going to do now is add my turkey. And I'm going to be putting these in little dishes and just covering the top with a pastry, puffed pastry, which is really nice. I do purchase that. I don't make it because it's a very lengthy process. 
um, requires really about 10 hours of making it. So I don't do that. I just buy it at Trader Joe's and you keep that in the freezer and then you take it out about two hours before you're ready to use it. And you can just kind of eyeball it. Now it depends on how much stuff you have in here. Like this is a pretty hearty mix. So we have a lot of turkey and carrots in here. So I'm probably gonna go ahead and add a little more, half and half. Could add a little more milk, either one. Just so we have it a little more moisture in there. It's looking good. Then I'm gonna add my peas. So that's gonna even make it thicker. But there is a little bit of water in the peas. So that'll help get the peas out. All right, add some peas. About a half a bag, it's a smaller bag. Let's see, this is 16 ounces, so about eight ounces of peas. Peas are yummy in this, I like that. So this, this is really, really easy. It's not something you're gonna put in the oven for a really long time because this part is all cooked and ready to go. So what'll happen is we'll cover this maybe for about 10, 15 minutes. And then we'll put them in little bowls and we'll put the puff pastry just over the top because if you put it over the bottom, all that happens is it gets soggy. So just put them over the top of the bowls and cook them for 10, 15 minutes. Puff pastry, puff pastry doesn't take very long to bake. And then you'll have a pot pie ready for your Easter lunch or dinner or whatever you're having. All right, so while that's heating, it's been about 10 minutes so far. It doesn't have to be super hot because it's gonna go in the oven for a little bit. I have my little piece of puff pastry here. And the only reason why I have a small piece is because I'm only using, I'm only making two right now. I'm gonna make them as I need them because I can do that easily and it's fresh and I like it fresh. Um, the pastry dough isn't gonna be really good like on a second or third day, you wanna eat that fresh. So I'm just gonna roll this out just a little bit. And then I also will be doing uh, a little bit of an egg wash. Cut this for the two. Just thin it out a little bit. Super easy, already made. You can get this in the store in the freezer department. What makes puff pastry so unique is that all day long, you're, as you're making this, you're adding butter to it. So it's an all day process, but there's a lot of butter in there. So that's why when you go to cook it, it's nice and flaky, which is what we like for this type of thing. So we're gonna go ahead and fill each of these with our pot pie mixture. All right, so here's our pot pie mixture. It's nice and thick really hearty so it's gonna be a nice meal I fill these all the way up if you find that you have a little too much liquid you can also use uh, instead of using all milk like I did you can use a little bit of a broth a vegetable broth or chicken broth something like that and if it's a little too liquidy, let it cook a little bit longer. It should thicken up. If it doesn't, add a little more flour until you get a good consistency. But um, I had mine covered for about 10, 15 minutes and it thickened up nicely. So that's all you need to do. It's pretty easy. So add a little bit of flour in there. Really yummy. Um, a little bit of salt if you like that. A little bit of garlic if you like that. And then we're going to just take our puff pastry right over the top. Any little pieces like this, we're just gonna kind of scrunch. And I'm gonna put these in a little mini oven, like a little toaster oven, so I don't have to heat my whole house up for two little pot pies. And I have that at 400 degrees because puff pastry, this is all cooked and ready. We really just wanna get the puff, puff pastry going. And that 
requires a higher heat. So we're just gonna make sure these extra pieces don't fall over the edge too much. Just kind of make it do that. And then I have one egg here that I just scrambled up by itself. There's no milk or water or anything in there. And we're gonna take this and we're just gonna brush it over the top. Should make it nice and brown when it's cooking and give you a little bit of nice texture on there. You can also put a little bit of egg wash along the bowl around here. Help seal it. I just forgot to do that. Another way I have done this, which is really nice, is I have taken cupcake pans and just you could take some Pillsbury if you don't have a lot of time or this isn't that important to you. You can take some Pillsbury biscuit mix and you can put the bottom part. So you take the biscuit and you cut it in half and then the bottom part you just kind of roll out inside the pan and then you fill it in and then you take the top part of the biscuit and you thin it out a little bit and you put that over the top and then you have a perfect, hold on. You have a perfect little pot pie and a little biscuit. So those turn out really great too if you don't have a desire of using this or doing this lengthy process here. Sometimes a lot of people just want things that are simple and this, this is just a little bit extra that isn't actually necessary. If you want to try using the other method, it's really simple. It's easy. You can make it for lunch. I have a, so much extra leftover. I can put that in the freezer and just take out bits at a time. Uh, I can leave it in the refrigerator for a couple days and just make a couple of these for lunch or for dinner. And so it's really easy. Now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to just cut a little hole here. And then I'm going to stick them in the oven and I will let you know how long they baked before this puff pastry was ready to go and we'll show it to you when it's finished. I am back and I will let you know that these cooked at 400 degrees for 15 minutes in a little tiny oven that you can use if you have multiple people that you're serving, you can put it in a big pie pan, fill the whole thing, put it over the top and then you can just serve it that way. I have a pack of these that comes with like six or eight if you wanted to do it that way. This is easy and convenient for me. Look how nice and brown and beautiful they are. Crunchy, crispy, hot, ready to eat. Uh, let's see. I did broil it for about two minutes so I can get a really good brown, but it was already starting to brown at the 15 minutes at 400 degrees. It's a smaller oven, so it might take a little bit different time if you're using a larger oven. In that case, I would say put it more towards the top because there's gonna be a lot of space between the pastry and the coils on your oven. So this is my dinner. Look how cute that is, I love it. I'm wearing my Easter celebration hat. Tomorrow is Easter and I'm going to color my Easter eggs. I already cooked and hard, well, hard boiled my eggs today and I bought a little kit. It's an, it's, I think it's called e Eco Eggs and it's, it's pet friendly, kid friendly. It's safe for the water systems and stuff. So I'm going to color my eggs tomorrow on Easter for fun because I enjoy doing that. And anyway, so I hope you guys have a wonderful Easter and thank you for watching. And I hope that you enjoy your pot pies.